Okay. Here we've got a large deep thigh mass again. And we go down to higher power and we can see it's composed of super ugly, nasty pleomorphic spindle cells arranged in these diffuse sheets here. So it looks, their areas like this look just like undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma, okay? But in this case, when we look around, we find that there are some cells that have a line of differentiation. There's a dipositic differentiation here, as is evidenced by these cells, which are pleomorphic lipoblasts. So pleomorphic lipoblasts have ugly pleomorphic nuclei, and they have clear, sharply circumscribed vacuoles of varying size. Sometimes they're small, like this. We can't see the nucleus here because it's out of the plane of section, probably. But sometimes multiple small vacuoles, sometimes bigger ones, but they're white. It means they're clear, empty. They were filled with lipid that washed out during processing. They indent and push into the nucleus oftentimes, and um, they're nice and sharply circumscribed. So here is a variety of different pleomorphic lipoblasts. Here's one right here with tiny little vacuoles. This one here has much larger vacuoles. So when you see a high-grade sarcoma with pleomorphic lipoblasts, that is pleomorphic liposarcoma. Now, D-differentiated liposarcoma is also high grade, but the majority of those do not have lipoblasts. They are liposarcomas because they arise from well-diff liposarcoma um, as a precursor lesion. There is a small subset of D-diff liposarcs can have lipoblasts, but as a general rule, what I tell my residents is if you see a high-grade sarcoma with lipoblasts, especially if you're in the extremities, the arms, the legs, Almost certainly what you're dealing with is a pleomorphic liposarcoma and usually D-diff laxus, although if you're in the retroperitoneum, which is the much more common site for D-diff liposarc and a very rare site for pleomorphic liposarc, if you're in the retroperitoneum and you see a high-grade sarcoma with some lipoblasts, then more likely you're actually probably dealing with a D-diff liposarc that's breaking the rule and having some lipoblasts. Um, and you can use MDM2 testing, which is usually going to be negative in pleomorphic liposarcoma, uh, although there have been very rare exceptions to that, um, but it's going to be positive in DDF liposarcoma. So that's a little bit out, the, out of the, uh, the uh, spectrum of what we're talking about. Look at how huge that cell is. I would say that in my experience, and I've seen a lot of different sarcomas, pleomorphic liposarcoma has some of the wildest, most bizarre pleomorphic atypia in the entire spectrum of human malignancy. These just enormously ugly, crazy looking cells. I mean, look how even that cell is bad, but this cell is like 10 times bigger than that. It's just nuts. It's crazy. So super bizarre and ugly cells, and you can see more and more different variations of lipoblasts. Some cases of pleomorphic liposarc have tons of lipoblasts, sometimes even sheets of them, whereas other cases, you might have to look through the whole tumor, you may only find a few. So it really can vary a lot. There's a lot of variability. You can have myxoid change in the background of um, a pleomorphic liposarc. In fact, pretty much all liposarcoma variants can have some myxoid background. So just because it's a liposarc with some myxoid change, doesn't mean it's myxoid liposarcoma. Remember, those are translocation sarcomas. I don't have an example to show you today, but they should not have pleomorphism like this, okay? So this is a pleomorphic liposarc that actually has some myxoid background change as a secondary uh, feature.